I'm 26 this year and what if I told you I can comfortably retire before 29 using all the retirement cheat codes, would you believe me? In this video, I show you all the 10 cheat codes that will accelerate your retirement. If you apply all 10, I guarantee you could retire in less than 4 years. And I think number 9 is the most important one. We know that doctors, lawyers, investment bankers and software developers are the most paid professions currently. So in order to speed up your retirement, you should aim to get a high income job. I only have experience in software development, so I can't speak for the other three professions. But if you are still at the stage of choosing your university course, choose the higher paying ones. Some of them may interest you. I have some friends from computer science who are at the top of their class aiming for 6 to 7k as their starting salary. I didn't top my class because I played a lot and enjoyed uni too much. But if you're currently studying computer science and want to secure a high salary next time, it really helps if you do at least two internships in the same field. For example, AI or data science or backend development or UI designing or cybersecurity. By the way, you can literally retire two years faster if you take JC instead of poly and you cram a four year computer science course into three years. And that's what I did. At the start of uni, I realized I could finish all 31 modules if I took 10 mods per year plus an extra summer program. I did the summer program in Indonesia. It was a two-week trip and it also cleared my overseas requirement needed for graduation. That was in December 2019, just two months before COVID hit us and overseas trips weren't allowed anymore. So I was super fortunate. And that's why I started working at 24 years old the same age as Singaporean girls who took poly and did a normal 4-year university course. So I basically caught up to them. No matter how much your salary is, what really matters is how much you are saving. So how are you going to optimize your spending so that you can save and invest as much money as possible? I would like to introduce the flipping hack. No, I'm not cursing, but it's buying and selling secondhand items. You can watch my video on how I buy cheap items and sell it sometimes at a profit in this video here. Essentially, when you need to buy something, especially larger ticket items, no I don't mean Taylor Swift tickets, I mean like anything above $50. Try and get the best deal on carousel and after using it, sell it for the same price or a bit of profit. Recently, I sold my secret lab chair and profited $10 after using it for a year. So essentially, I got paid to use it. You can still buy whatever you want and net $0 or even profit from it. In the worst case, you only lose a bit of money. So that's how I'm not really sacrificing on shopping while trying to save money. Of course, that method only works for material stuff that you can buy and sell after you finish using it. You cannot sell your food, transport, subscriptions and your holidays. So I'm going to share how I reduce those expenses. If you're new to my channel, I'm Aaron. I make videos about my journey to financial freedom. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. For food, I'm trying to eat at home as much as possible, mainly because I know I kind of already paid for it as part of my contribution to parents. So to me, it makes no sense why I need to eat out again when I already have home food. I also think eating at home is much healthier because I don't add additional salt and sugar to my food. Food is the main expense for fresh graduates who still live with their parents. So because it's the main expense, you can really save a lot of money by eating at home. You can cook a bit more for dinner and bring the leftovers to work for the next day. For my transport, I averaged $16 per month last year. One major reason for this is because I can work from home 3 days a week. Perks of having a programming job. Again, if you are choosing a university degree, pick something that you might be able to work from home. Doctors definitely can't work from home. But also, not every programming job allows you to work from home. So I really count myself really fortunate that I am able to work from home some days of the week. So this is another hack. If you can also take leaves on your work from office days, it is truly optimizing your transport expenditure. But I don't do it just to save the $3. I really don't like squeezing into the train at peak hours and I also can save almost 2 hours if I take leave on office days. Oh, I have one more hack for optimizing transport costs. Make sure you are using the Healthy365 app and you are clocking 5,000 steps and 30 minutes of moderate exercise every day. If you can max this out every day, you should be offsetting your transport cost by $8 a month. It is no small change. It literally cut one third of my transport cost last year. Those who are already exercising anyway, it is just free $8 every month. You are doing it without any extra inconvenience. So to those who think it's too much effort, maybe it is time to start thinking about your health goals instead of just focusing on your financial goals. For subscriptions, I have never had a gym membership before. I just do push-ups and sit-ups at home to train for my IPPT. 
IPPT is super important because you get $500 if you get gold every year. To me, it's like a side hustle where I get $500 for working 2 hours of the IPPT test. $500 is worth roughly 2 months of meals for just 2 hours of work. You don't need a gym membership to be reasonably fit. There are so many other ways to keep fit like going out for a run. Unless you really want to build muscle, then you have to go to the gym and lift heavy weights. If you just want to be reasonably fit, you can save about $100 per month by doing your own exercises. As for your other subscriptions, maybe your Netflix, Spotify, YouTube subscriptions, if you use them frequently, then it's fine. After all, they don't cost as much as a gym membership. But if you don't, then it's time to cancel those subscriptions and become debt free. By the way, I don't even have Spotify and YouTube subscription, I just watch the ads. But I think the best thing you can do to reduce your expenses is to keep living with your parents just as you did when you were still in school. You don't want to be pinned down by a mortgage debt as soon as you start working. I know it's tempting to spend money because you've never had a few thousand dollars entering into your bank account every month before. But still, you gotta have some level of delayed gratification. Also, delayed gratification doesn't mean you must be bored every day and can't enjoy life. I mean, before you earn a salary, were your school days miserable? You weren't earning money during school at all. Now when you suddenly have a salary, and if you don't spend the money, you're all of a sudden not living life anymore? As a fresh grad without any mortgage or kids, you can realistically save more than 80% of your salary. Now, I'm doing the exact same activities as my uni days after I finish work. Essentially, I just replace studying with work. Being a fresh grad is the perfect time to save most of your money because the money when you start working will be worth much more in the future because of compounding. During uni, I was in two sports CCAs for four days a week. So now you could say I'm in my sixth year of uni and I'm still trying to attend my CCA at least once every week. Therefore, I don't really see myself as doing delayed gratification because this is how I am already living anyway. And before I knew it, I realized I am actually able to achieve financial independence before 30 years old because my expenses are so low. So what do you do with the money you've saved? The most obvious place to put your savings would be in dividend stocks so that you can live off your dividends when you retire. For example, the three banks, DBS, OCBC and UOB are giving a yield of over 6% now. And this yield should increase as the dividends per share increases next time. Because that means the yield now may be 6% and then next year might be 7% and then 8% then 9% yield. Then at 9% yield, that means you don't have to put money in the S&P 500 anymore because it grows only by 7-10% to each year. You also don't know if the price of the S&P 500 may fluctuate or not. So that's why I like to invest in our SG banks. Let's say you want to live off $3,000 per month from dividends. You need 600 k invested. If you could invest 5 k every month into 6% dividend stocks, which means you just need to work for 8 years with dividends reinvested. And that's not even considering capital appreciation, increasing dividends per unit, or yearly increment of your salary or bonuses. 3 k per month in Singapore is a reasonably comfortable lifestyle. If your partner also has 3 k then your dual income is 6 k already. So you can really be quite comfortable if your goal is only 3k a month. But what if you want to retire even earlier? What if you want to bring that 8 years down to 6, 5, 4 or even 3 years? This is what you can do to speed up this process. The first thing to consider is a cheaper lifestyle. I don't need nice things to be happy in life. It's like a game where I can choose which component of my life I can spend money on. Because when I'm older, will I talk about my life experiences and friendships? Or will I really talk about how luxurious my house was? So that's why I'm not aiming to buy the biggest and nicest house in the future. Also, ask yourself if you really need to own a car in Singapore. Actually in Singapore, we don't really own our cars when we buy them. We have to scrape it after 10 years, so i much rather treat it like a 10 year loan. This changed the way I look at cars because now I don't have the sense of owning a car purely as a status symbol. When I see a Ferrari on the road, I think that must be an expensive rental car. So once I realized the sense of owning a car in Singapore is kind of like a scam. Would you pay money to fix any scratches on your rental car? Perhaps not, right? But obviously, if I were super rich and I can afford a rental Ferrari, then why not? It is cheaper overall to live with a partner. Assuming both of you can spend 2.5k, that is 5k of spending for the family, which is right at the median expenditure of Singaporeans according to Seedly. Living with a partner is cheaper because you share the house. Now you don't need two kitchens, two bedrooms, two televisions and so on. But besides living cheaply, you can also consider living in another country. Everywhere else in the world is cheaper than Singapore. There are many Singaporean YouTubers who are doing this and I have a few relatives who are living in other countries as well. 
Go and watch other YouTube videos about the cost of living in your dream country. It can be as cheap as $1,000 to $2,000 only because the rent in other countries is like half of Singapore prices. So if you don't mind living in another country with $2,000 dividends a month, you need 400k in 6% dividend yield stocks, which requires you to work for only 6 years with dividends reinvested. Okay, besides spending less money during retirement, the next way to speed up your retirement by another 2.5 years is by semi-retirement. Actually, I think this is a realistic goal for many retirees since most people don't want to be bored during their retirement and want to do something productive like a side hustle. How fast you retire really depends on how successful your side hustles are. As you know, some teenagers have become really successful so they never have to do a traditional 9 to 5 job a single day of their life. So start your side hustle even when you have a full-time job or maybe even when you're still studying. If you do YouTube, unless one of your videos suddenly goes viral, YouTube is a really difficult side hustle to do. I'm sure there are many other passive income ideas you can start online. Besides passive income side hustles, you can also do active income side hustles where you are still trading your time for money like photography. On the low end, you can charge $100 per hour and if you do 2 hours each week, you can earn $800 a month. 800 a month as dividends requires you to invest 160k in 6% dividend stocks. That means you save 2.5 years of working from your full-time job. So if we apply the hacks of living cheaply in another country, doing an $800 per month photography side hustle, you now only need 1,200 of dividends per month, which means you need only 240k invested, and you will get there in 3.7 years of working your full-time job. However, side hustles may not always be consistent, so I'd rather be conservative and don't spend the side hustle income. I will invest it to grow the dividend income and spend only the dividends instead. But can this side hustle lifestyle beat inflation at 3%? Even if our side hustle grows by only 8% a year, as you can see, it's sustainable. Now, let's say that you only get $200 per month from your side hustle, and assuming it grows by 10%, and you spend all your $2,500 dividends. It is still enough to beat a 2% inflation. So having a side hustle gives you the peace of mind to spend more or even all your dividends because you are able to keep up with inflation. You can download this excel sheet and play around with the numbers in the description below. Also, if you plan for too much buffer, by that I mean you only need to live on $3,000 a month but you want an extra $1,000 a month as buffer. You can save about 2-3 to three years of working if you don't need the extra $1,000. And if you're doing your side hustles, they also give you the peace of mind if you get a huge expense in the future. If the worst case scenario really strikes, you should be able to be flexible, for example, by selling some of your stuff. Just don't go for a holiday that year, hustle a little bit more, or even move back to your parents' place for a while. So be flexible and resourceful so that you don't have to plan for too much buffer. Also keep in mind that we haven't included capital appreciation or increasing dividends per share. So take just a comfortable level of risk and not too little. Recap. Number 1. Get a high income job by choosing the relevant courses in university. Also going the JC road and graduating one year earlier will save you two years. Remember to do at least two internships relevant to your target job during uni so you have the best chance of securing your high income job. Some jobs allow you to work from home too, so that saves you a lot of transport costs and time as well. Number two is flipping so that you still can buy anything you want. I only buy secondhand items and sell them for the same price or profit after using them. You can watch this video about how I do this in detail. Number three is optimize your spending. If you are fresh grad, food is likely to be your main expense, so eat at home as much as possible. Tap out food to work. Continue to take public transport and get rid of any unused memberships and find free ways to exercise yourself and clock steps using the Healthy365 app to get $8 per month. And this is how I'm saving over 90% of my salary right now. Number 4 is passive income. If you want to live off dividends, the easiest way is to invest in DBS, OCBC, UOB which currently gives about 6% dividend yield and will likely increase their dividends per share too. Number 5 is define your optimal lifestyle. How cheap can you get by but still live comfortably? Number 6 is do you really need a car? Because buying a car in Singapore is basically like a 10 year rent. Are you really buying a car for more convenience or because of the sense of car ownership? Number 7 is dual income. If you add your partner's income, how does it compare with other Singaporean households? Living together is cheaper because you share a lot of costs with your partner. Number 8. If it's your dream to travel, 
why not try living and retire in another country where you don't need as much money as Singapore, but make sure you have enough passive income if you do decide to come back to Singapore next time. Number 9. Consider doing both active and passive side hustles because I believe it is the fastest way to retire early. Even having a small side hustle gives you the peace of mind to spend more of your dividends because you can beat inflation. If you spend 100% of your dividends, you cannot beat inflation so side hustles are important. Number 10. You don't need to retire with too much buffer. Too much buffer will delay your retirement. Retire with a reasonable amount of buffer and take some risk. Be flexible and resourceful when unexpected expenses arise. Rise, hustle a bit more, sell some old items, drop one holiday that year, or live with your parents for a while. And also here are some of my other videos that YouTube thinks you'll like.